we'll be dealing with a subject today of faith, but not just faith. We will deal with the enduring faith. Faith that continues. It doesn't stop. We'll deal with the source of where it comes from. And hopefully have an understanding it's not finished when you first get it. That's not all you're going to get. It's not all you're going to need. But we want to pray and ask God to help us as we endeavor to preach and declare God's truth and He will make it alive to our very souls. Would you pray with me? Father God of glory, we give you praise. Lord, we have faith sufficient for today. And Lord, that's enough. Whatever we need before this day is over, Lord, we can receive. I ask you to help us to declare your word powerful and meant to accomplish what is said and stated plainly in these scriptures. Not just to hear and know that it's true, but God to be able to live it out in a world that don't know you, for the most part. Pray for your anointing to continue to rest upon us as we proclaim your truth, and upon those who today will hear it, and receive it, and walk out with it, and continue to keep it, and let it apply to every situation of life. And dear God, we'll give you glory and honor, and the praise. We're going to Hebrews chapter 1. He tells us why, and then he tells us where it comes from and what he's going to do with it. But he starts to ask us, what we're seeing, we are compassed about and so great a cloud of witnesses. Lay us, lay aside every weight and the sin which has so easily beset us. And let us run the race with patience. And let us run with patience the race that's set before us. And then this next verse is my key text, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. All right, I want to begin with the origin of faith where you and I experienced it. it we do believe something either to be true or untrue. But the faith, the faith here comes as a result of our responding appropriately to what we hear. When we do that, then the giver of faith, the author of faith, he just drops a deposit of that down in your soul. Yes. In other words, when we hear the gospel, number one, the beginning of where faith comes from, and we respond to its message appropriately, and God gives us faith to be saved. It's a gift of God. And so He's the author of faith. So we don't have to walk around just trying to have it. It's something that God has given us. And, and we must possess and understand where it comes from. It comes from God. And He gives it to us because we need it. Yes. No matter how you grew up, what you knew beforehand, when you respond appropriately to God, then God drops that faith right down in your heart. Now, just prior to His talking about this faith, He's talking about a race of life. Some people today call it the rat race. <laughs> But that's when you're just running after everything. Yeah. We don't have to be caught up into that race. No. Our race is somewhat a little different. And we can do better or we can allow hindrances to hinder us from being and doing what God has commissioned us to do here. Yeah. And so he just says start out with, with just you know, deal with the sin business, lay aside every weight, not only sin, the weights and sins that are so easily beset us. Yeah. Now in this world, there's a lot of distraction. 
which will weight you down. Excess back, if you please. God talks about it in various scriptures, about the seed and song and the cares of this life that hinder the Word of God from accomplishing what God intended to. Amen. This is supposed to be one of the most precious sayings that there is. Amen. When you and I are to be able to come together and hear the powerful gospel anointed by the Holy Ghost to be impressed in our heart and to change our life and He'll give us faith to believe that it will. Amen. He simply will do that. And so we, we have to stay focused or we need to stay focused on God's truth, God's uh, uh, directions, if you please, directing our lives because He has a mandate for us. He saved us. And I want to, I want to get into another passage of Scripture in Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. And He starts out with this, By grace are you saved through faith, and that didn't come from you. It's not of yourself. It's a gift of God. And that way it takes away all boasting. We're not beating ourselves to death, you know, just because, you know, we have a little bit of faith. It's from God. Whatever faith you have, it's from God. To Him belongs all the glory. No matter what you have to deal with, how much He gives you, He'll give you enough to deal with whatever you got to deal with. You want more faith? Well, He'll give you some reason to need it. Come on. Come on. Yeah, come on, Amen. Hallelujah. It's not just so you can have a tongue of faith. That's not the way that works. God just gives you faith for whatever you need. Yes, we do need our level of faith to rise at times. But there's a purpose for that faith to come. It's not just so you and I can strut around saying, look at me, what I can do. We can do nothing without Him. Amen. And so all glory belongs to Him either way. Yes. But we are. Certainly we want more faith. We should desire uh, more faith. The gifts of God. But, but it's for the purpose for which He gives it. Number one, to live a life that's pleasing to Him. Amen. Because He goes on to say, for we are His workmanship. He's begun to work in us. We simply believe that because the Word of God says so. Created in Christ Jesus for something. Hallelujah. Pray <laughs> God, what does those next few words say? Unto good works. Good works. Amen. So our the race of life, you and I are are challenged, or rather, we have the opportunity to do. The will of God. Amen. In which God before hath ordained us to walk in them. So I want to deal just briefly with faith to do rather than, you know, just faith to get. We hear a lot of messages about faith to get. If you have faith enough, you can get what you want. <laughs> but that's really not the purpose of what I'm going to deal with today. About faith. Yes, faith is substance of things so far. Yes. Evidence of things not seen. Amen. But I think probably one of the greatest needs in our churches today is to have faith to do the will of God. Um, and that's where I want to deal with just a few issues uh, here this morning found in the... Uh, uh, well, I'll get to that in just a minute. I'm about to get ahead of myself here. But, but faith to do. And so... So when God has given us some instructions, we simply need to figure out what these good works are. Now it's not just setting a little bit of time aside where you and I can do something and feel good about it. That is appropriate when you do the will of God. We should have a sense of accomplishing something and, and pleasing God. We certainly should have that. And that's good. But, but all glory belongs to Him uh, either way. But, but it's not just faith to start. That's what I want you to understand. God gives us faith to begin something, but not stay at that level. He also wants us to grow up and do something Amen. for His name's sake. To bring glory and honor to Him because of His presence in our lives. I want to uh, 
just remind us, faith needs to be kept alive. Yes, amen. You know, the Bible says faith without evidence or works is a dead faith. And so we don't want dead faith. We want our faith to remain alive. It was alive when we got it, yeah. when we received it, and we want to keep it alive. Yeah. Now James says there is there is also uh, where, where we walk around like a corpse spiritually. Mm -hmm. Dead faith. And we're talking, don't forget where we're going with this, we're talking about faith to do the will of God. Man, yes. And in uh, Acts chapter 14, and verse number 22, it talks about the confirming the souls of His disciples. And this confirmation comes as we continue in the faith. Because He said exhorting them and encouraging them to continue in the faith. He says there are going to be difficult times. There's going to be tribulations on the earth. Yes. Before we get to enter that heaven, right. heavenly realm. There's going to be some tough times. So yeah. if uh, if somebody tells you that you know God will save you and your life will be better, it kind of depends on how you may look at things. Yeah. Yes, it'll be better in the sense that God will deliver you from the bondage of sin and death. But you may begin to experience difficult moments because there are opposition to the path that you're walking Amen. today. There's an enemy out there, the world, the flesh, and the devil, that don't want you to continue in it. And he'll deal with any one of those areas in your life, and he'll challenge you, and you will experience tough times. He said, the world's not going to love you. I just want you to get that straight. I don't care if you miss America. I don't care if you're Mr. Universe. The world ain't going to love you. That's right. If you're a child of God. Amen. The world's going to love you. It's so long. In fact, he said, marvel not that the world hates you. Come on. Yeah. We don't like to be hated, do we? Man, all of us want to be loved. <clears throat> but the reality is, God will give you faith to walk in a direction if the people don't love you. Yeah. You can still yeah. walk and do the will of God in the midst of these difficulties. And I'm going to have some scriptures here in just a moment that's going to deal uh, with some of those issues. In fact, why don't we just go to the first one. Uh, it's in Luke chapter 6. There's some scriptures here that talk about uh, doing the will of God. I want to just look at them briefly. It starts out with something God tells us to do. Now, this is the Lord. If you have a Bible, this is red letter. You know, Jesus spoke this. You know, all of the scriptures give them inspiration of God. But we like to put special emphasis sometimes just on the red letters. Jesus spoke this, you know. It all, it all is powerful. It all uh, come from God. But this comes out straight from Jesus' mouth, all right? And, and so what, what did He tell us to do right here? Does that sound like a happy time for you? Does that sound like a good feeling to you when you do this? But what I want you to understand is you can. You can love people. It's, it's kind of hard to love folks right now in, in some areas of the world where there's a lot of turmoil and people seem to hate us. Yes. But what did God say do? Mom. Love them. Love your enemies. If they're sitting beside you, just smile. That's right. Yeah. Ah, got you. No, they're not. You couldn't hardly help but do that, but they're not your enemies, the person sitting beside you. They're your friend and they love you. But there are people that don't love you. And God says we're to love them. And you can. All right? You can. God has given you faith sufficient to love people that don't like you. You just simply can do it. So, so when we're dealing with this faith, it's faith to do the will of God and then do what He said. Now the reason we know that, God has shed abroad His love in our heart by the Holy Ghost. So we have the love of God. God is love. His presence there is the essence of everything you and I need to do what He said. We are empowered to do it. And so, so we have faith to love those people that don't love us. I don't mean you have to be gentle. I'm just saying you need to love them and understand what that means. It means that you don't wish no harm for them. Basically what you want is for those people to be saved. Right, it goes on to another one. And he says... 
He, he only did it. Only just say love. He said just do them some good if you can. In fact, if you need to loan them some money, go ahead and lend it to them. And, uh, hope for nothing in return. Boy, that sure don't sound good, do it? My goodness. Well, well, I thought gospel was good news. <laughs> it is. Because when you lend somebody something, that means you've got it to lend. Amen. Well, where did that come from, do you suppose? Who allowed you to have enough to lend somebody else? The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And so everything you have belongs to Him anyway. Amen. And if you just lend in something and hope nothing in return, if you get a payment back, you can shout glory. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, we look at things so differently, but here's some things that God empowers us to do by faith. And I want to tell you, you can do this. Amen. You can do it. This is faith that endures when things are not going good. Now, now, a lot of you in this congregation, you've already dealt with some of, the, some of this kind of thing. You may have lent and expected in return, but you didn't get it. So what do you do with that? You have to change your mind, don't you? Yeah. And you have to forgive that person that didn't pay you. Now, on the other side of this thing, ladies and gentlemen, we Christians don't do that. Okay? You know, if, if we if we ask for something, we need to genuinely need it. Amen. And we don't take advantage of our brothers and sisters in Christ just simply because they may have a little more than we do. I don't know if any of you heard this or not, but do you know what the average person in Egypt lives on a day? I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard it was two dollars. You wonder why those people are so upset over there? Why they hate America? Because you're doing so good. I dare say there's not a person in this room that lives on two dollars a day, unless you're living with your parents. Ain't no fuzz up over there. You guys are working, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. But but it just it just simply means that God has blessed us, and and, and, and we're not going there. It's talking about people out there that come to you. And, uh, and they ask for things. And uh, if we have something, then, then, then we, we generously uh, help others along the way. And he, but he didn't stop with that. He said, what did he say? There was a reward. Your reward will be great. Isn't that wonderful? Now we know that if we do what God wants us to do, He's going to reward us for it. That's a pretty encouraging message, isn't it? God's going to reward you. Why do you suppose He's going to reward you? Because you do what He says. Amen. Right. You win. If you've got more than you need. You know, the Bible talks about, we, we think we just work so we can have a living. That's not it. God says, let him that steal, steal no more. But let him labor with his hands that he may have to give. That he may have more than he needs that he can give. Because you see, when we walk with God, we walk charitably. Now, the problem with many in America today, the American mindset, is to get all you can and count all you get. You know, and count. Right? I mean, even, even the leaders of our country will print more money, so you're, you're, if you've got it in there, it'll build up. It'll look like it's worth a lot. But when it ever goes down, it just bottom falls out. Some of you experience that like I myself, right? In retirement. I don't know why I do that anyway. God says we don't lay it up with moth and rust. Right. Your right. finances are in good hands with God. Yes, sir. And, and you say, well, I thought you were talking about people. Well, he said, whatever you do to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it to me. So that's kind of how all this works. Let me, let me move on. He's kind always, by the way, to the unthankful and to the evil. I can't say that I'm really, really thrilled when somebody's unkind to me and I have to be kind. I, I, I'm not really thrilled about it, but I am thrilled about this. I can do it. 
Right. And I should do it. Right. Because God does it. Yes. Right. He's kind to the unthankful. God says in the last days there would be people that would be unthankful yeah. and unholy. And there are. There are people you can do things for and they're not going to like what you did. Because you didn't do enough. Even though it was free. <clears throat> oh my, I got stumped up when I run through that. <laughs> and, and then in the next verse, verse 37, no, let me go back to verse 36. And be merciful. And he tells us to do it like do this like he does. Be merciful as your Father in heaven is merciful. Now you and I have experienced this. We sang the song while I go, everybody needs compassion. Everybody needs forgiveness. Everybody needs the mercy and grace as we grow together. We are merciful. So so we don't always, or, or we're not supposed to be rather vengeful, but we're to be merciful to other people because you and I have experienced this mercy. Yeah. If we got what we, what we deserve, where would we be? Right. We would be lost today. But thank God for His mercy. Ne next verse, he goes, there's a couple of knots. You notice in all of the, in these group of verses that I'm going to go through, verses 35 through 38. There's only a couple of knots. Now we deal with a lot of knots. Don't, 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 don't. Matter of fact, you know, one of we have a tendency sometimes uh, to just just tell tell folks what's wrong with them, right? And we think because we tell them what's wrong with them, that's going to fix it. They probably already know what's wrong with them, and they aren't really happy about it. But you know what they need? They need your faith to be operation in their life. Yes. That because of the way you do things, you are approachable. You are approachable. And these folks can talk to you about the problems. And you can share the message of hope and faith that I'm sharing with you today. You can. But he, but he said there's a couple of things. He said don't do. He says don't judge. Right. Judge not. And you shall not be judged. There's another scripture that says whatever judgment you judge, you will have to deal with that yourself. So we need to be careful. I'm not saying that, that you and I don't have to deal with issues here in this world. He just simply says we're not to be judgmental toward others. Especially our brothers and sisters in Christ. And then he says, don't condemn. And you'll be not condemned. Don't condemn others. You know, when Jesus came into this world, you know what he saw? He saw a world filled with people struggling with self-condemnation. Beat up every day by the powers of darkness and evil. Pointing out every failure, every flaw that people have. Bringing condemnation. And you know why people won't talk to you if they don't? I'm hoping, I'm talking to very few people here. But if you're unapproachable, it simply means that person don't need another tongue lashing. Amen. Amen. Right. Hallelujah again. Amen. They don't need another. They, they don't need another threshing from that old loose tongue. Now, do they need instruction? Yes. yes. But not for the purpose of condemnation, for they condemned already. And Jesus said, I did not come to bring condemnation, but I come to save from what causes condemnation. And so what you and I have, we have a message of hope and lie Amen. to people who are beaten down every day. And we can share this hope. You and I have seen people fall. That's not a good thing. We should not look at people out there that fall and, and make such statements, well, I never had no confidence in them anyway. That means you didn't have no faith. Amen. We need to have faith. We need, we need to believe and encourage people to believe that God has set them free. They're already there. They just need hope and faith in God that God will give them the same kind of faith that He's given me and you because you and I once walked down that same path. That's right. Come on. That's right. Come on. And we got a message to share. Yes. The people can come out of darkness. People can be delivered from sin. God will save you from that. They already 
out of their field with condemnation. And then he went on to say, forgive. If you want to experience, now these are some things God just said to do, faith to do. We have power to do it, ladies and gentlemen. You and I have power Amen. to forgive. Amen. We have faith sufficient to do the will of God. It's an enduring faith. <coughs> it's an enduring faith. Because it endures. It, some of these things are not easily dealt with. Right. And it's Amen. not feel-good things that we talked about earlier. But it's faith that persists in mind and your lives. That go with us when we leave this church. I know y'all wish you had some of that. Please don't leave and go get it. I ain't finished yet. <laughs> All right. Forgiveness. We talked about it earlier. Forgive. When people trespass against you, be quick to forgive. Yes. Don't, don't wait around and, and not speak to them for 30 days. That just builds animosity. Yes. Be quick to forgive and move on. Now, I'm saying this because you can. Amen. If you have the faith that God has given you, He said, I'm the author of what you got. And, and I'm going to finish up on what you need to get Amen. along the way. Yes. I'm going to be the finisher of that. You know, when you people that build houses, you have people to do the rough work. In this business, we do all of it. Hey, some rough work, all right, <laughs> that we get involved with. But there's some finishing touches that God will put on mine and your faith yes. as we deal with the circumstances of life. He may, he may just upset you till you decide you're going to do what He said. Right. What a teaching tool God has. He may send somebody in your path just to aggravate, aggravate the daylights out of you till you make up your mind. I have the faith. I can do this because God told me to and God will never tell you to do something you couldn't do. Amen. And so He's telling us, I'll give you faith to do it. These are, this is just a little small patch of Scripture, but I thought it had some neat stuff in here that we need to share about what to do. And then after he said forgive, and you will experience true forgiveness, he said in verse 30, 38, give, and it will be given unto you. And I want to just stop you just for a moment. Brother Chuck just kind of touched on this earlier. Some of you, I don't know if all of you have gotten it yet or not. Probably not. In the group this setting, it's not, this is not prophetic. And, uh, but but it's just, it just happens. But some of you, you haven't bought into the thing about tithing yet. Some of you are thinking about it, okay? I really believe some people in this church right now are thinking about, you know, I, I, instead of giving God a token, I really need to honor Him with, with 10% Amen. of my income. I need to honor God. And uh, and I just for the glory to His name, I'm going to honor God and I'm going to lay it in the storehouse just like God says on the first day of the week. Let every man lay in store that the God of the Apostle. That's New Testament doctrine, by the way. That's not Malachi. Okay? It's New Testament doctrine. So, so some of you are thinking about that. But you know what you're going to hear on the other side of that? You're going to hear that, oh, you made tough times coming. You may need it. Can I tell you, if you don't, boys, if you don't do it, you have tough times are coming and you're going to need it. Amen. I'm not saying tough times are not going to come if you do. Because your faith will be challenged. But I'm just telling you that you can do it. And, and, and because God, He gives us these things with promise. And He said, He didn't say how, He just said He would. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Yeah. Do you have faith enough to believe that yeah, today? Yeah, Lord, I'm telling you, you do. I'm telling you, you do. God has given you faith sufficient to yeah. do this very thing and experience what He said would follow. It will be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Run it over. Shake it together. I don't have it. Run it over. I don't have it. How much more do you can say this? That's pretty powerful scripture. And He said, well, folk don't do it. Me, don't give to you. It may be a woman. That, you know, mankind. But, but it'll be given. It'll be given unto you. God will give you what you need. And how does He do it? By the same measure. So if you tie one, if you're a tie one, we don't want to be called a tie one, do we? 
We like to be called Drifty. It just sounds bad. It means the same thing. But you know, it's about giving and counting, and it's not about you know doing the will of God. But he said this measure, God, God wants you and I to be generous. He's given us faith to be generous. He's given us faith to believe if we'll seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, that, that He will add all these things. It's not a world economy, ladies and gentlemen, that you're not living in. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's not the world's economy you and I are living in. We're living in God's economy. God's given us faith to believe what He has said in this powerful book right here and, and experience what He says we would experience as a result of obeying. He's just going to bless you real good. Yes. I don't know. I don't know a separate way to put it. But some of you are being challenged with that. I want to encourage you. God will give you faith. When you begin to step out and do what He says, you will experience that finishing touches on your yeah, faith. Man. Pretty soon, you'll, you'll be glad to He said, cheerfully, Brother Chuck talked about a while ago. Oh, he loves his time. You know why he loves his time? Because he gives cheerfully. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they ought to be dancing going on during this Amen. offering. When we just the offering on Sunday. Right, God. Oh, that didn't strike a good note. To see <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, when you get it, it's, it's, it's different. Yes, it and is. God has given us faith, and He will, as we respond to, to doing what He says. Yes. Just being generous and allowing Him uh, to do some powerful things in our life. But don't give up the faith. Just as sure, and, and some of you may be doing this, I don't know. Some of you may be saying, you know, I mean, you just see, you know, this is a thing to do to honor God with what you have. And uh, and you begin to experience the power of God. That's going to be tested. I can just tell you it will be tested. There will be times. I know growing up with six kids and, and two jobs, it was still tested. And it will be with you. But none of us are, with, are exempt from that. And, uh, you know, you'll have a flat tire, but if you got the money to pay for it being fixed, isn't that a good thing? Yeah. Sure it will. But God will see to it along the way. So 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 don't give up. Continue in the faith. Work through. Endure. There'll be there'll be crisis along the way in your home. But no, don't let your faith fall. Amen. Continue in that. Let God speak to your heart Amen. in a powerful way and raise you up. Because this is what he said in Colossians 1 23. If you continue in the faith, if you continue in the faith, drown it in seven. Now there's an if there right at the beginning of this passage of Scripture here. Because he goes on to say other things that he's preached. Paul has preached to you. But, but if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and this is what we all want to get. Now, uh, that, that if indicates that you can choose not to. Amen. It's not a matter of God choosing that for you. God's already made a choice. And we're preaching what that choice is. But, but you can make a choice not to. And what you will experience is a diminished faith. God says in another passage, him that hath will be given to him that hath, and they don't do this even that that he hath will be taken away. And you will experience a diminishing faith. If you want more faith, just simply start doing the, uh, the will of God on a regular basis, and I can promise you, you will experience great faith. Yeah. It will increase as days go by. It's, it's not just faith for a specific thing. God will, do, God will take care of that too. And He does. But He'll give you faith for life. Amen. I mean faith to just walk. That's an enduring faith, ladies and gentlemen. It's a faith that goes on with God. Amen. I think we've heard the other side of that for a, a lot just to, just, to, you know, just so we can get. But, but this is a faith to do. And, and if we'll do it, the other part will take care of itself. Amen. Because God's going to take care of that part. And He's always faithful. So we need to continue in the faith. Now there's a sad note in 1 Timothy 4 1 that says everybody's not going to do that. He says some will depart from the faith. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost said this. And it was penned that in the latter days, latter times, times that you and I live, some will depart from the faith and they'll and they'll get caught up in there's a spirit that says, Don't do this, do something else. And it's called uh, deceiving spirits, doctrines of devils or seducing spirits. So we don't want to get caught up with that. We want the faith that's going to stand the test of time. Yes. And yes. it will, and it can. Amen. God is the author of that. Amen. It come from God. It'll do what it needs to do. 
every time. It'll do what we need what uh, we need it to do. And then he goes on in 1 Peter 1 and 7, and he talks about how precious that moment in time is when your faith is, is being stretched. The trial of your faith is more precious than gold. I think gold is probably worth more than it's ever been. Wouldn't you say? I think that's why he uses that word. Gold. That perish. This is more precious than the, than the gold in Fort Knox if there's any left. It's more precious. <laughs> the trial of your faith to God is precious. Now, now the reason being is God knows that there are struggles in our life at times. When our faith is being stretched, you, you feel like you know you've done all you can do, and there's just something to be done. And we experience the grace of God in those moments, and we experience the faith. Our faith is just being stretched. We just need to look at God instead of complaining. And it's okay to talk to God about it and ask Him a few questions. He can handle it. But but just talk to Him about it. Say, Lord, I sure do need You to help me here. Just be honest. If you, if, you, if you seem like your faith is inadequate, talk to Him about it, and I can promise you one thing, He will not fail you. Mm -hmm. right. He'll see you through. Yes, there will be uh, trials. There will be tough times. He goes on to say, though it be tried with fire, that sounds pretty tough, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It is tough. But that's when our faith increases. Amen. That's when we talk, I talked to you about earlier, when you ask for more faith, now, I don't want you not to pray and talk to God about faith. I don't want to say, yeah, you ask for more faith and God's going to put you through the fire. You know? Well, He may put you through the fire because He thinks you need more faith. Amen. Regardless. But there's one thing about it. He'll give you faith just like He did. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, and, and this is what they said. We're going to obey God. We're not careful. We're not, we're not afraid. But regardless of what happens, we're going to obey God. And guess who was in the fire with them? It was the Lord. That's what the king said. I don't know how he knew it, but he did. You and I know it. The Lord was with him. So when you get to seem like you're going through the fire, I mean, this world's in a, in a mess. Our country's broke. And so uh, I'm old enough to get a check now from, from the government. So if they get broke, I'm not going to get mine either. <laughs> but you know what? I know one thing. I'm not afraid to do the right thing because God's going to be with you. And my source is Him. I'm not opposed to you getting a check. I'm not opposed to me getting one because I do. And I don't sign it and turn it back to the government because I've been paying for it. 40 years? Well, no longer than that. I've only been paying for 50 years. And, and I'm okay with me giving them something, giving me something back. They haven't spent it all, I don't guess. Yet. So pray. <laughs> Amen. So pray. I know many of you get the check too if you're thankful for it. But, but that's not our source. No, that's right. Our source is yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. If that, if that becomes our source, we'll do things that we ought not to do. Right? And we'll agree with things we ought not agree with. So we have to be careful uh, in this area of life to understand, even though it's tried by fire, that we're going to be found unto praise and honor and glory when He comes. We're going to be still honoring God. We're still going to be praising God. And we're going to experience the glory of God and His manifest presence and uplifting our faith to whatever we got to deal with. Amen. I'll just say this before I go any farther and I'm going to close. Some of you may have been struggling with people that's offended you. And you're still wrestling with it. If you still have ill feelings towards someone that's offended you, you need to do this as quick as you can. You need to get on the phone and you need to go to that person and say, I just want you to know, that, you know, whatever that was, I forgive you. And I want you to forgive me. And just get that done. Oh, what a release that will be. God's given some of you faith to do that right here this morning. You can't hardly wait to get out of here. Just take care of business, right? Amen. Hallelujah. I hope I'm not speaking to a lot of people, but I feel like I'm speaking to some. 
And you, you said, well, I'm still fighting that. Well, 1 Timothy 6, 12, he said, fight a good fight of faith. Amen. It'll be worth the struggle. Amen. Fight it. Win. Fight to win. Don't fight to lose. You don't fight to lose. You fight to win. And so fight the good fight of faith, he said. And then he said in 2 Timothy 4, 7, he said, I did it. I did it. I'm at the end of my road. I did. He said, I fought a good fight. Yeah. I've kept the faith. Yeah. Oh, how many times could have Paul said, God, why didn't you deliver me before they stoned me? I know it's like being raised from the dead. But don't you know those thoughts at times may have entered his mind? Yeah. Why didn't you why do I have to always get locked up and run out of town? Yeah. And why? I'll tell you why. He was fighting the good fight of faith. He knew right. God was with him no matter what That's right. he had to deal with. No matter if the world loved him or hated him, he still, he still was going to do what God told him to do and commissioned him to do. And that's what you and I, God has given us faith to do. And that's faith to do His will. Amen. I'm not saying there won't be a struggle at times. The Bible never said that. That's why Paul used this terminology. He said, fight the good fight of faith. But you're fighting a fight you can win because God's going to give you faith to do His will. So stand to your feet this morning. I'm going, to, I'm going to just deal with something just quickly here. Number one, if you don't believe you can be saved today, you need to reach out to God and believe God's Word. God will give you faith sufficient to be saved right here, right now, this morning. If you don't believe you can be forgiven and your life changed, you need to know one thing. God, if He's the author of faith, He'll give you faith. If you respond appropriately to God's call, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved, God will give you sufficient faith. If you want your life changed, He'll give you sufficient faith. And to all the rest of you out here uh, that are Christians, and you're, you're struggling in an area of life, and you honestly can say, I really need some faith with what I'm dealing with. And uh, it's a struggle. I'm fighting a battle. I'm just being honest. But I, I know God will see me through. And I want to come up here and I want to believe God as an expression of my continued obedience in Him. We want to continue in the faith. So I'm going to ask you, General Aldercall, come up here and let's deal with it right now, right here. And let's believe God and give us faith to do whatever it is He's commissioned us to do. Any of these categories or others that I never mentioned, we want to deal with right here today. Come on. Hallelujah. Faith sufficient. Faith sufficient to do the will of God. Whatever that is, whatever struggles you're going through in life. 